Hi guys, this is a bit of an impromptu video I never intended to make. I was just busy doing a build here at the moment. I uh, looked across and thought, oh, why don't I give the Z97 or the Apex 70 and 7700K a bit of a whirl. So I put the Apex on, but I remembered I had some Samsung OEM um, DDR4 2133, but it's eDI, uh, which is a decent overclocking chip uh, until VDI came along and smashed everything. So I put it in. Um, Accidentally forgot it was set in at uh, some previous uh, a kit I had, and there was some Team Group uh, 3000 Hynix. So I've replaced it with that, and it booted up at 3000 just in case Able through uh, Superfly did Cinebench. So obviously, it's got a bit of headroom over its uh, uh, factory, uh, sorry, uh, JD SPD timings. So I'll give it a little bit of a crank up, and we'll see how we go. Um, I think I'll just make it easy on myself and um, load up to Bowers. Um, manual uh, profile. I'm uh, not a big fan of the adaptive and offset method, although other people are, so I won't slag it off too hard. Um, but yeah, so if I just set that in there, uh, where am I? Okay, so I'll go back. Let's lock in the 50 with a um, AVX instruction, uh, what do you call it? A negative of three. Uh, so 2133 is stock standard. What do we do? I think I'll just put straight into. Let's get 26 and see how we go, eh? Uh, I don't think I'll do anything else at this point. I don't know what else has been set. Yeah, okay, so the cache is in at 45. You said the one, set the 1350 volts uh, LLC. I wonder what that's gone in at. I'm going to muck with this board for a little bit. Level five. Yeah. Okay, it's got the uh, digi power settings on pretty light. Okay, so here we go. See if it boots. If so, I'll cut this short and transition again into uh, some results later. Mm -hmm. That's not looking good. Unless it's just um, resetting for the volts to do the training. These are frustratingly, frustratingly slow booting motherboards sometimes. The memory training takes quite a while. Right. Well, there we go. Boot it in. Touch wood. Okay. Look, it's going to boot in. I'll just change the fan speed. Now. So everything ran fine after it booted in at uh, 2666. Uh, sorry, 2600. Um, it's E-Die, so what you'll find is with your timings, um, unlike B-Die, which will generally be something like 16, 16, 16, um, and other ICs are similar to E-Die in that they have uh, uh, their uh, TRCD and TRP, uh, two, generally two, um, above the cast latency. These are rated at 2133 at 11, 11, 11. So, um, yeah, I... I had a, a, an EDI kit before that was Corsair Vengeance LED 3200 that would do 15, 15, 18, 18, 15, 17, 17 at 3600 after overclocking. Uh, tw uh, reasonably stable for, for daily use actually. I didn't try to really push that to uh, up anywhere near 2 volts and it was about 1.5 I think. Uh, this is. Uh, Three five. I don't think it adjusted itself. Um, trying to say, yeah, 1.35 uh, on the DRAM down there. So uh, I let it auto time there, uh, set those uh, timings by itself. I will leave the timings on auto when I reboot. Um, go up to 28, 100, yeah, 2800, and let it do its own thing. And uh, I can look at the timings a bit later just to see how the board's going to handle it in auto mode. Um, I thought the D2M Pi time for no wazzer and um, yeah, really nothing done at all, just except uh, putting frequency up was reasonably decent at that, it was pretty efficient for what it was. Uh, the R15 time on stock was 950 ish, let's say. So a little bit of a decent jump from there, but I'll tell you, you know, memory companies are the probably the biggest dudders in the industry. 
I remember G-Skill had a 3600 kit out, uh, B die, C16. Uh, then they released their RGB kit. All the same timing, same voltages and everything. I did it, went to do a build for someone and uh, realized it was uh, some junk Hynix underneath. So they're taking advantage of people because people wanted flashing RGB lights uh, by saving themselves money and pulling, pulling the B dies out, using them elsewhere, whatever, and, uh, and putting in some junk. So yeah, you always gotta be careful. It's, uh, look at version numbers or learn how to read the codes, uh, stickers on uh, G-Skill or Corsair or whatever whatever you like, but uh, uh, well, G-Skill are generally got it these days. A lot of, some people are going with the team group, and there's a bit of this and that floating around, but um, still even lottery, lottery applies. The B dies I've got, uh, there's two, two kits that are quite commonly talked about as being two of the better bin kits to get, which is a, a 3600 kit, C1516 or 70, C16 generally is talked about a bit, and the 4133 kit at C19, um, with the 1919 timings afterwards, I might be wrong about this, but the 1921-21s I think are all A2 PCBs. It's a different type of PCB, and they don't like Z270. So be aware of that if you if you're buying RAM, just be careful. Anyway, I'll be back. So I thought, look, just before we go back to the results, if you do have a Z270, this is just might help you out. These are examples of what the earlier B die kits. Uh, Look like actually, I've got one here. It's the 3600 C16 stick. Uh, it's partner died somehow. Not going to admit to how. Um, thanks, sir. Uh, these are a couple of uh, lovely little explavies. A bit of a unicorn here. Anyway, so these have got the design of more the B die layout. This is more your A2 PCB, Prince Edward layout. With a gap in the middle and your and your your four ICs off on either side of the centre. Anyway, I just thought I'd point that out to you because if you need to pick a kit for Z270, you don't want this. Anyway, so uh, auto uh, timings that decided at um, at uh, 2800 that it'd go to 17, 18, 18. Uh, that's fine. Um, not much of an increase because the the latency got worse, obviously. Uh, but a little bit of a gain there and uh, 635 on that. Super time. So um, this is by no means stability testing, but I am, you know, SuperPod does give the, the memories a bit of a, a thump in the nuts, and uh, Cinebench is a good mix and sort of spikes the CPU a bit, not quite as much as XTU, but yeah. So I'll um, go 3000, see what it does. Just a quick interim video. That's probably a better example of what an A2 PCB will look like for you. It's an OEM kit of Hynix um, DDR4. Those other examples I showed you weren't quite on the money. This is probably a little bit closer. Unless I'm not disputing. Okay, guys, so 3,000 was fine. Uh, almost no difference in scores there, really. Uh, not a lot's changed, but 3,000 worked, so I'll keep going. So I said 11, 11, oh, CL11. It's not CL11 at all. I think DDR3, 1600. It's, um, uh, excuse me, CL14. Um, BCLK's down, we'll drop to 13 on B. Um, now when I say PCB being A2 doesn't like Z270, uh, I was referring to B die. I'm not sure of the other stuff, but this is the A2 PCB in this E in this E die. It's the B die it doesn't like it with. But I haven't heard him talk about the other ICs on that PCB. Uh, it seems to be doing all right here. It's at uh, 3200. Um, sorry, one sec. Yeah. Still at 17, 18, 18, 30, 36. So, um, yeah, I guess we got the 34. We're going to make a video on the chili kits here, basically. Um, for the record, I suppose. Uh, I'm only sort of maintaining an 18 and a half degree look. Um, so, it didn't want to go on the auto type, type setting, so 532. Um, and it's setting itself in at 1.5 volts. That IONSA uh, in, in um, Windows at 1.15 on um, I think it's a little bit I'm just going to leave it there at the moment. We'll come back to this at some point. Tweaking memory doesn't take five seconds, so a bit more of a play. Um, yeah. 
anyway, um, I'd rather see that uh, doing that in tight of timings. The reason the scores didn't improve before is other stuff with secondaries and thirds because the obviously the TRFC loosened off a bit there and uh, the scores are much the same. So, uh, just show a little uh, 2133 kit before you're going out and buying that. You get your head spread and put the RGB 3000 plus kits when you do this. Put something like Something like your own big sprint, if you wanted to, I suppose. Yeah. Reminds me, seriously, I have to get Skull Trail out. I haven't been really run through that in the last lifetime. Anyway, thanks for watching the vid. I'll go and put the chunks together then. This is bloody beautiful. So really the chopsticks just there for perspective because it's a 28 inch um, 4K monitor which probably makes the case look small. It's not small at all, it's a mid-size but it's a very wide case. I like working in fractal R4.